There's over 700 highways in the U.S. There's bound to be some creepy horror stories. Grab a blanket, turn off your lights, and drive safely. Especially when you have a stranger tailing so close behind you. Highway Assistance from a Serial Killer My mom told me this story yesterday. The relationship to the person it happened to is a bit convoluted. The guy was from my mom's friend's son's friend, if you can follow that. But the point is that it happened to someone close, which makes it seem that much more freakier. I don't know what the boy's name was, but for the sake of the story, we'll call him John. John was driving through Sturbridge, Massachusetts, when he got a flat tire. He pulled over and put his hazard lights on to change the tire. He got it fixed, but by the time he was done, his hazard lights had drained the battery, so he was stuck. A car pulled over behind him, and a man got out to offer to help. None of them had jumper cables, so there was nothing the man could do, yet he didn't leave. He stuck around and started talking to John, asking him some weird questions. The one John most distinctly remembered was him asking what John's religion was. John started to get some creepy vibes from the guy, and he tried to put his car between them. At that point, Two police officers pulled over behind them. One officer went up to John and forcefully grabbed his arm. He told him to get back in his car, roll up the windows, and lock the doors. It turned out they had run both license plates, and the other man was driving a stolen car. The police grabbed the man and slammed him against his car and put him in handcuffs. There was an ABP out for his arrest. They went around to the back of his car and opened his trunk. I excitedly said to my mom, was there a body in the trunk? No, but close, she told me. When they opened the trunk, they found a tarp. Under the tarp were a bunch of sharp tools, including several pickaxes. My mom described them as disembodiment tools. I don't know, with pickaxes it sounds like he could have been trying to break into places, I said. Right. But it turned out, he had killed 15 people. Holy shit. Update. The arrest occurred on July 30th, 2012, on a highway in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. I've checked the Sturbridge police log, but the monthly report for July hasn't been posted yet. It only goes up to May right now. I'll keep checking on that. But in the meantime, I will keep looking for other articles about it. I mean seriously, with 15 murders, there's got to be something written about this guy. My parents are currently contacting their friend to find out the name of the killer. A creepy encounter with a woman on the highway. I've read so many stories on here, so I decided to submit my own. About six years ago, I was with my friend Tom at my parents' cabin. We decided to head off to a casino located on an Ojibwe reserve about 40 minutes away. The entire stretch of highway between is heavily forested and has no lights, meaning it can get incredibly dark. We got there and played some poker, tried a few table games, and grabbed some dinner with our winnings. Pretty successful night overall for the both of us. We ended up leaving the casino at around 1am, a little later than I would have liked, given the lack of any streetlights. We drive for about 20 minutes on the highway, without passing any other vehicles, when I noticed two green orbs just off the highway before a hill. Realizing it was a deer, I slammed on the brakes and waited. Several deer crossed and we resumed driving. The car was going slowly up the hill because it was a starting stop. 
As soon as we can make the crest of the hill, Tom screamed, Holy shit! Right in front of us was a young woman walking in the middle of our lane, towards us no more than maybe 30 feet away. I slammed on the bricks and came within 10 feet of her. Thankfully, slowing down earlier and climbing the hill meant we weren't going fast. But what was going through our minds wasn't the fact that I nearly ran over someone, it was... It was that this young woman with pitch black hair was wearing a white nightgown with no shoes, walking towards us with a blank expressionless face. Not gonna lie, that image frightened me because it looked like something straight out of a horror movie. Tom and I waited to see if she was going to pull up to her window and maybe ask for help or something. She made it to the front of my car and went around the driver's side. She didn't stop. But she raised her hand and dragged it across the side of my car while continuing her walk. At this point, Tom and I were both freaked out. I asked Tom what to do. He said we should just get out of here. For whatever reason, I just didn't feel right about leaving and not asking if she was alright. I looked in the rearview mirror and saw that she was still walking. Having almost hit her and knowing that something just wasn't right, I decided to do something. I told Tom that I was going to ask if she was alright. Tom pleaded that we just go and get out of here. I put on some bravado and told him not to worry and that I would be right back. I put on my blinkers and stepped out of my car. I left my door open to provide some light as I walked around the trunk of my car. My interior lights didn't do much, but blinkers would allow me to see an outline of her slightly down the hill. Only able to see her every other second, I half yelled, Are you alright? She finally stopped walking, but still faced the other way. There was no response. I heard Tom's door open as he was getting out to join me. Suddenly... She started screaming. Tom and I ran back into my car and I just floored it. I got a lot of shit from Tom for the remainder of the ride back to my cabin. Haven't heard or seen anything like that on the highway since. And I'm pretty thankful for it. That was... The creepiest moment of my life. Smiling Creep on the Highway Okay, so this happened to me when I was around 13. My dad lived 12 hours away, so in the summer when visiting, my mom would drive halfway and my dad would meet her in the middle to drive the rest. At this time, I was just coming home so my mom was picking me up. We had around a 6 hour drive ahead of us. The sun was pretty low in the sky, so I'm thinking... This was around 6 to 7 p.m. About 40 minutes into the drive, I remember looking out the passenger side window to the car next to us. They were in the slow lane, but they kept right up to my mom's car. The guy inside was a darker skinned man and looked to be in his early 20s. The thing that was really unnerving was that he was grinning at me, not, not like a friendly grin, just like a manic movie serial killer grin. He barely looked at the road and instead was turning frequently to stare at me. I turned to tell my mom about the freak next to us, but I noticed her hands were tight on the steering wheel and she looked really tense. I'm not sure how long she noticed him, but it must have been a while before I did. I told her he was freaking me out and she was basically like, yeah, I know, it, it, it's okay. We didn't talk much while it was happening, I think she was trying to concentrate or something. For over an hour, he followed us on the highway. At one point there was a lot of traffic, but he wouldn't relent and kept right up with us. He always had a huge smile on his face. I remember being worried he would wreck into us because he was hardly watching the road. 
Whenever he was behind us, my mom would tell me to look forward and ignore him. I kept turning around to see him. The worst, though, was when he was on my side looking at me. I didn't want him to see me cry or freak out, so I just kind of sunk into the seat hoping, hoping he would stop. My mom switched lanes a lot to try and keep him on her side, but that didn't help much. He just kept staring and just kept smiling. I was really starting to panic after a while. I kept thinking what if he follows us home or runs us off the road. Up ahead, there was an exit for one of those Native American souvenir stores with a cafe or gas station attached. My mom took the exit at the last second while the creeper kept driving. I was still freaking out, but my mom took me inside, got us some food, and we sat down and ate for a while. We were facing the window so we could see out, but his car, his car never showed up. After that, my mom took me to the store portion to look around, I think to calm me down. I don't know if she called or talked to anyone. Eventually we left and I remember asking my mom, what if he comes after us again? And she said he wouldn't. Made it home safe and sound. I haven't talked to her about it since, but seeing this reddit brought to mind a few creepy stories that's happened to me. Stranded on a Highway This very chilling encounter is one that happened to my mother Lorena back in the late 70s or the beginning of the 80s, probably about 10 years before she had me. She must have been in her mid to late 20s, thinking about it really gets to me, with me being her only daughter, which I am sure you will understand once you have read her story. At the time, she was living somewhere not too far from Miami, Florida. She worked in a casino on a Club Med cruise ship and would also perform as a singer some evenings when she could. Given the lifestyle she had, it was not unusual for her to end up driving home at ungodly hours. So I suppose given the circumstances, at least one scary story was unfortunately inevitable. It must have been around 2 or 3 in the morning, and she was driving home on a lonely highway on the outskirts of the city. I am almost positive anybody could have guessed the next thing that happened to her because it is just so incredibly cliche, but her car broke down. This was a time before technology took over, so naturally she was completely stuck and had no way of contacting help. Even better. The highway she was stranded on was surrounded by swamps swarming with gators. Florida, go figure. So walking to find help was out of the question. So my mother is not one to panic prematurely. She sat there rather patiently for a while, hoping somebody would stop to help her. But she soon came to the conclusion that most people probably thought she was sitting there waiting for a drug trade or something, given the time and location. I cannot say how long she had been waiting in that one spot, but eventually, a car pulled up and stopped about 400 feet behind her. In theory, this sounds like a good thing. She probably thought it was a good thing at first as well. Just one problem though. The man in the car sat there for about 10 minutes without moving a muscle. At this point, my mother was past the point of panic and into the stage of intense hyperventilation. Looking at this man in the car through her mirror, as the minutes went by, she knew nothing good was going to come out of this. When she told me this very story, she even said, and I quote, I knew I was going to be murdered. To her horror, the man finally very slowly got out of his car and made his way to his trunk, opened it, got something out, and began walking towards her. No one walks that slowly when they're on their way to help someone and worse. She managed to make out what he was holding. It was, it was a wrench. 
now call it luck, divine intervention, a coincidence, or whatever you like, but at that very moment, a tow truck drove by and almost immediately did a U-turn and stopped next to my mother's car. The man with the wrench turned around and quickly got back into his car and sped away. Once she was safely on her way home, with the help of the tow truck driver, she asked him why he stopped to help her, to which he replied, I got a glimpse of that man's face and could tell he was up to no good. So there you have it, let's just say I'm glad that creepy wrench guy and my mother did not meet. <laughs>